Welcome Online Compel family. Thank you so much for tuning in today's message. Before we get started, here's a few things we want you to know. First, we would love to have you stay connected with us on all social media platforms. If you have yet to do so, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as we will be posting videos each week. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok at We Are Compel, and last but not least, our tech service. You can text us at Compel to 816-307-1611 for updates. Also, if you need prayer or just someone to talk to, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on any of our platforms or email us at prayer at rockofkc.com. Again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. We are believing God has something in store for you. All right, go ahead and grab a seat. Can we go ahead and give it up for the worship team one time, for the one time? Not good enough. I said, can we give it up for the worship team one time? And briefly, I wanna, I wanna just shout out any volunteers that we have that uh, give their time and their talents and their efforts and their energy to compel because I know you guys just think this is just a Sunday thing, but the truth is is that Monday through Saturday, we're still planning and preparing for the, for the next week and the week after that. And so we have an incredible team of just not just uh, our worship team, but our production booth and they're awesome. So can we just put a hand together for everybody that serves and compel to make this happen? Because we literally wouldn't have youth without volunteers. We wouldn't have youth without people who serve and give their, their time and their talents to Combell. So, cool. How's everybody doing? Are you good tonight? Are you happy? Are you happy to be here? Come on. Are you, are you thankful for people? Let's go. Let's go. Can you turn to the person next to you? Can you just say you look fantastic tonight? Now turn to the other person that was not your first choice and say you look good too. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, if you ain't first, you're last. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. I think there's some wisdom in that. Well, hey, uh, my name is Drew. I get the honor and privilege to lead what you are at, um, which is Compel Youth. And um, we are just so excited to have you with us, whether it's your first time or you've been a part of Compel since as long as you can remember. Um, we exist to just make much of Jesus and worship him through the teaching and preaching and gathering of the community. And this is what we really believe in. I believe in uh, Gen Z. I believe in the next generation. And if I didn't, then I wouldn't be standing up here today. And so I hope that as, as I preach this message tonight, as I uh, really proclaim the word of God, that you catch a revelation that you would get. Uh, an idea of who Jesus is, and then you would be so compelled uh, to go out into your world and make an impact and make a difference. Sound good? Let's go ahead and jump right into uh, the message here tonight. And uh, you guys are quiet tonight, which I don't like that. I'm not going to lie. I'll just be fully transparent. I don't like the quietness. So I'm going to need you guys to say amen really quick. Just so, that's so good. Can you guys do that just at literally any time during the message? Just shout amen. And it's good. Yes, I like this. This is not a, I'm not a teacher, listen, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a professor, I'm not up here uh, just to hear myself speak, I'm up here to, I'm up here to proclaim the word of God. I mean, let's just, let's just call it like it is, and we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna get after it, we're gonna get after it, so, I love you too, man. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 5, all right. So uh, let, me, let me set up this message a little bit. So I know, I know most of us in here are just like Bible scholars, like we could all just speak from the Bible at any point. You guys probably know the Bible front to back, like it's just the back of your hand. I'm kidding. Okay, so the, 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 the Bible is obviously broken up into different sections, right? And so we read about uh, what we call uh, the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? Uh, don't get lost as I'm, as I'm teaching this, by the way. Just, just pay attention, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the Gospels. And then the first book that we get after the Gospels is a book called Acts. Now, Acts is everything that happens after Jesus' death and resurrection. Because you guys believe in the death and resurrection, amen? Will we all agree there? So after Jesus dies and then is resurrected, we read in Acts about the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand if you've heard about the Holy Spirit. Good. That's a good place to start. I feel like in church, we love to talk about God the Father. We love to talk about Jesus the Son, right? But we don't like to talk about the Holy Spirit a lot. And I don't know why, because the truth is, is that the Holy Spirit is extremely necessary. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, we literally would not be able to operate in the, in the works and gifts that God has given us. And so it's important for us to understand the importance of the Holy Spirit. And so God would have actually, Jesus had been talking about the Holy Spirit long before he, the Holy Spirit even comes onto the scene. But in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, Jesus says, John baptized with 
water or in water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So you guys remember a couple months back where I preached a message and I talked about John the Baptist. You guys remember that? Raise your hand if you remember that message. The divide I hide. Does anybody, does that ring a bell? Does anybody remember that message? Okay. I talked about John the Baptist and this is a man who was proclaiming and saying, hey, listen, I'm baptizing with water. But soon to come is going to be somebody who's going to baptize you in fire. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And so we read about that here in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. And he's talking about, hey, and this is the words of Jesus. So Jesus says, John baptized with water, but I will be baptizing you with the Holy Spirit. So we talked about John B. So you guys remember John B., John the Baptist. And Jesus is saying, yes, what, what John did is essential. So, so hear this, young people, understand this. Getting water baptized is still important. It's still important for you to get water baptized. It's still important for you to die to your old self and then become a new creation. But then the next step is being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's essential because that is what is going to uh, take you, your faith to the next level. And so you have to be submerged with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were here, uh, excuse me, when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free us, uh, or for, excuse me, to free Israel and restore our kingdom? So I'm reading out of Acts, by the way, Acts chapter uh, 1, verse 6 through 14. And so the, the, the disciples are asking, hey, is the time now for you to come and free Israel? Because the, the, you got to remember, the disciples, they're just getting this glimpse, like they're just getting Jesus after the resurrection. So they're like, is he going to stay here forever or is he going to go? We, they, they were still kind of confused. They're like, what's going on here? So the disciples are asking questions. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they just kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not free to know. But you will receive power. Somebody say power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taking up, taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him. So what I just read is, is that Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's like, guys, listen, I need you to go with the gospel. I need you to go with what I've been telling you and been teaching you for the past three years. The disciples only got three years with Jesus. He, they only got three years with them, and then he's gone. So the disciples, they're talking with Jesus, and they're like, so are you going to leave or are you going to stay? And he's like, actually, everything that I've been preaching to you, I need you to go out and make an impact in the world. I got to go. Peace. And Jesus just left. Like, he's just gone, and he went up into, into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. This is what we believe. And so he has, they have this, this encounter with Jesus. They have this, this very powerful moment, right? And then Jesus is like, I got to go. I got to go. But I'm leaving you with something. I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is so vital for us to understand. So this is the last encounter that they get. Jesus is gone. And so the disciples are probably just standing there like, what just happened? Picking up in verse 10, as they strain to see him rising into heaven. So you guys can imagine this, right? Are you guys visual people? Do you guys like, do you learn through visuals? Because that's how I learn. So I just see the disciples like, as Jesus is like, I got to go. He hops in a cloud, gone. Like this is like, like Dragon Ball Z style. And the disciples are standing there like, is he gone? He's gone. He took off. Jesus is no longer here on earth with us. And so there, and then all of a sudden, two white-robed men suddenly stood, stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way that you saw him go. I hope you understand the power of that too because, yes, we believe that Jesus died and when he was resurrected, then gave us the Holy Spirit, but we believe that he's coming back again. Can somebody say amen to that? We believe he's coming back. Amen. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room. Somebody say upstairs room. This is important. The upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, who? Matthew, James, Simon, and Judas. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and several other women and the brother, brothers of Jesus. I don't expect you to remember all those disciples' names, but if you want to learn them, that'd be cool. I want to, I want to go ahead and I want to title this message, Highest in the Room. Highest in the the room. And I'll talk about what that means here in a moment, but can we pray together? Father, thank you so much uh, just for tonight. God, I thank you for the lives represented in here, God. I thank you for all that you're doing in and through Compel. God, it's an honor to serve you. It's an honor to worship you. So God, would you just prepare our hearts so that as the message goes out, God, that it would be received on soft hearts. 
and that they would hear the word and they would act upon it and we would all be changed and leave here transformed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Um, I got a question. Have you ever had a moment that was so incredible or so powerful or so moving that it was just one of those moments that like if you weren't in the room, then you just, you, it didn't have the same effect. You ever had one of those moments before? Where it's just like, yo, you had, to, you had to have been there, right? Like you guys know how people always say pics or it didn't happen. Well, even pictures don't do justice sometimes, right? Like it's like, have you, has anybody been to the mountains before? Have you been to the mountains? Have you been to the ocean? And you take a picture and you're like, guys, this is insane, right? Like this is the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. And then you take a picture and you go home and you're showing your friends and you're like, well, it was, I promise it, it, was, it was cooler than this. It doesn't look quite the same. It's, it was cooler than this. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, do you guys remember when the Royals went to the World Series? You guys remember that? Back in like 2015? The Royals went to the World Series, and um, I, I mean, what if I told you that your boy got to go to game two? Listen, I don't want to flex or anything, but I may or may not have went to game two. And I also may or may not have gotten in there illegally. But I, you know what? Listen, I guess we'll never know if that really happened or not. Let me explain. All right, listen. I was an employee, all right, for a, a company and I had to use my bat. Okay, very legal. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you guys that. But I went to this game, right? I got to go to game two, World Series, game two. It was insane, guys. It was like, it was the coolest moment. Like, I'm not even a big baseball fan, but like, just to be in, in a stadium that's literally every single seat is sold out for, and all these people just cheering for one person. Johnny Cueto pitched lights out. The Royals won the game. I was standing like kind of close to the field. I got to talk to this guy who was like, he worked for ESPN. And I'm like, that's literally the coolest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Like, this is amazing. But I, the thing is, is that that was a moment and it was, an ex, and it was an experience that only I can like fully tell you about or the people that were there, right? It wasn't like, it's not like I make like me telling you, like you guys are, you guys don't care. Like I'm telling you and you guys are like, okay, I don't care. I wasn't there. It doesn't mean the same, right? And so there's power in moments. Another moment that was really powerful uh, for me was when I was, a, when I was uh, just a couple years ago, my, my mom had a, had a baby, which is just bizarre because I'm 23. I was 22 at the time, and my mom, she has a, a little one now. But the, the power, and after my mom, you know, had the baby, and we all got to go in and see the Like, my little brother, it was just, it was just a powerful moment. It's like only moments that you can, you can't just, you can't reciprocate them. They're just, they're, they're moments that just are powerful, Right? And I asked everybody to raise their hand, if you've had that moment, you've had those moments where it's like, if you're there, you understand the moment, but if you're not, you just don't get it. As the disciples, they had this moment. They had this moment with Jesus, right? They really had these moments with Jesus. They're, they're traveling all across the land, and, and, the, and they're seeing Jesus perform all these miracles. They're seeing Jesus do all these incredible things, and they're all just these moments like, if you weren't there, you don't fully understand the power in them, Right? I think Jesus understood that. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew, I'm one person, okay? I have the Holy Spirit that I'm giving you because I want to see you recreate those moments. I want to see those moments recreated in your life. And so the truth is, is that I got, I got a couple points for you. And I want to I ask you, uh, or these points are really directed towards, towards um, this right here, the power in moments. The power in moments. And so how do we recreate those moments? Well, point number one is simple. We got to get to the upper room. Somebody say the upper room. Somebody get to the upper room often. What is the upper room? As we read in the scripture, the, the disciples, as soon as they had this encounter, as soon as they had this moment with Jesus, they immediately left from watching Jesus ascend into heaven and went into prayer. And they went to that upper room. So you know what the upper room is? You're in the upper room right now. This is the upper room. Moments where you're gathering around community, you're gathering around people who have the same like-minded things as you. You guys all wanna hopefully grow and seek the heart of God. Hopefully you're here because you wanna get better and this is how we grow and get better. So when I say get to the upper room often, I'm saying get to compel youth often. Not because I, not because I want to hear you, I, not because I want to see you guys come and see me preach, not because I want you guys to come up here and, and, and just sing along to these songs and kind of go through these motions, but you're gathering because you're longing for this moment to have a, an encounter with Jesus again and again and again. And there's power in the upper room. There's nothing special about this room. There's nothing special about these walls. There's nothing special about these instruments. There's nothing special about this platform. The only thing that's special is us having an encounter with Jesus. That's the only thing that matters. 
If you get anything out of this, have an encounter with Jesus. Get to that upper room often. When we're here gathering, when we're here praying, when we're here uniting, when we're interceding, we're doing what Jesus was doing. Jesus said, I, I'm never doing anything that I didn't see the Father doing. Which means that it's, it's almost like a streamline. It's a perfect streamline. Jesus is saying, I didn't see anything that the Father isn't doing. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I didn't see anything that Jesus was, wasn't doing. Because they're all intertwined. They're all one. The, the, the Trinity. I would love to do a message specifically on the Trinity. Maybe we'll post it on our YouTube. Guess you'll have to subscribe to see what that looks like. But talk about, the, talk about the, the Trinity. It's important. So Jesus is saying, I didn't see anything that the Father wasn't doing. And now I'm empowering you with that same spirit, which means that we're not doing anything that we didn't see Jesus doing. And Jesus was praying. Jesus was seeking God. Right? Jesus was performing miracles. Jesus was healing people. Jesus was walking on water. I mean, these are all things that if you truly believe, like you're a follower of Jesus, that same spirit lives in me. I believe that I have the power to heal people. Not like a superhero, but better than that. The Holy Spirit power empowering me, equipping me to go in and make a difference. But I say this a lot because I believe it's essential for us to gather often. And it's not for numbers. This is not for show. If there was 10 people in here, I'd be preaching the same message. This is, this is because I believe in what is happening in and through today's world. 2021 has been kind of bizarre already. We already know 2020 was crazy. So how much more do we need to seek the heart of God? If times are going to get crazier out in the world, we need to continue to gather often. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. We got to gather. Yeah, you can put your hands together for that. We got to gather often. We got to gather often. We got to seek the heart of God. We got to continue to press in. Point number two, why are we pressing in? Because there's work to do. There's work to do. Our pastor once said this, and it stuck with me. He's like, why hasn't Jesus returned yet? Because heaven's not full enough yet. We got to have more souls saved. We got to have more impact. You guys got to have more influence in your schools. You guys got to have more impact in your world. This is not for me. This is not, for, this is, this is not just my job. This is your job. Just because I stand up here once a week with a microphone does not make my job any more important than your job. I'd make that argument day and night. Jesus is in heaven. He's seated in glory. That's what we read about, right? You guys read that passage where he hopped in a cloud and took off in a jet, spaceship, gone, in heaven. But he's equipping us and he's telling us, listen, as my disciples, you got work to do. Go prophesy. Go heal people. Go proclaim my word. Go make an impact. Go make a difference. Because I'm equipping you with what you have. I'm equipping you with what I have. And we're called to make an impact here. This is not my job. This is our job. So Jesus is seated in glory, but he's telling us, I'm going to return one day. Will I find faith? Is he going to find faith in your life? I had a question for you, and this is not in my notes. Have you completely surrendered your life to Jesus? Not in a convicting way. I just, have you completely surrendered your life to Jesus? And, and this is, this is a... Uh, it's an important question to ask yourself if you've completely surrendered your life to Jesus because the truth is, is that you can't just have a little bit of Jesus. You've got to have it's all in or nothing. So you can't just say, I surrender my life to Jesus when I come to compel on Sundays or church on Sundays. But on, on the other days of the week, I'm not so interested in it. I'm not so interested in it. I'm not so interested in, 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 uh, in living my life. I surrender my life to Jesus in this area, but I don't care if I cuss on social media. Can I get real? Can I get real, Compel? I don't care if, I don't even care if the song on the, on the TikTok has a cuss word. I'm going to say it. I don't care. It's cool. My, my parents don't care. It's cool. It's not about your parents. This is about if your life is fully surrendered to Jesus, you make no exceptions. Every area, every aspect. When people talk to you, I hope they see Jesus. That's my prayer. When they talk to you, like, I'm going to shout somebody out really quick. Noel, when I, when I hear you sing, God's working that gift in and through your life. Like, we can all agree there, right? And, and Noel, is, I'm not, she's not above anybody in this room. Her hands are open, and she's saying she's fully surrendered her life to Jesus. The fruit is evident from that. And so, therefore, when you guys see Noel, I hope you're like, wow, I'm just in, in awe. I'm, in a, I'm, in, I'm amazed by what God's doing in and through her life, that's called the reflection of Jesus in her life. I want that for my life. I hope that when you guys see me, you don't just see a guy with a red hat and a jersey on. I hope you see Jesus. 
That's what, that's what my prayer is. That's what my heart is. That's what I pray for you guys all throughout the week. The importance in, these, in the small detail things, they, it all matters. It all matters. And point number three, this is actually my, my, my longest point. You guys taking notes? Raise your hand if you're taking notes. I'm buying Chipotle for everybody that's taking notes right now. <laughs> point number three. Stay united. Can somebody say stay united? Stay united. The power in unity. The Bible actually says that there's a commanded blessing in unity. I love that so much. A commanded blessing. That means that when we're unified and we all got the same heart, we all got the same mind, we all got the same spirit, we all have the same revelation, a blessing is bound to come. That is it. That is Incredible. This is great. That's great news for us. If you get anything out of the message, stay united. Stay united. Once Jesus empowered his disciples with the Holy Spirit, they instantly got together and sought the same God that they just witnessed ascend to heaven. So they said, hey, listen, I was with Jesus for three years. Three years. He was talking about, I think I remember him talking about how he's going to come back one day. He's going to return. I'm praying for that return to happen right now. Like they immediately sought the same God that they just spent three years with. They're like, I don't want to go another second without having that same God living and, and moving and breathing and through my life. So they had this encounter. They had these powerful moments. And they're like, I got to get back to it. So they went, from, they went from having Jesus separated, how do, I get back, how do I get him back in my life? Jesus, again, Jesus knew this. So that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. And they recognized that they're nothing apart from him. And they're so incomplete without his presence and long for his return. Long for the, we long for the return of Jesus. There's so much power in, ex, in teenagers accepting this call in your life. There's a call in your life. If you're in this room, there's a call in your life. There's a call in your life to make an impact. There's a call in your life to lead your generation into, into the right direction. I know times are crazy. Listen, I get it. I know that... A school locally, you guys all know it, I'm not going to say it, but you guys all know that they just had a presentation on LGBTQ and why, it's, and why we should start using pronouns instead of whatever. So we know where the world is heading. We know where the world is going. We cannot budge on what we believe in. We cannot budge on what we believe in. And we believe that the cause of Christ is the most important cause on, on the face of the earth. We have to stay united on that fact. We cannot come in here and go, that's a good word, but like what if, like who cares if this? God cares. God cares. If God didn't care, he wouldn't have put it in the Bible. <laughs> and the Bible is, we don't worship the Bible, we worship through the Bible. The Bible is what we use to direct our steps and guide our steps. If we, don't, if we, can't, we cannot separate from what the, the truth is and the Bible is truth, we have to believe that. We got to stay united on that. Young people that understand the importance in we instead of me. Say it again. They understand the importance of we instead of me. So let me say this. Me says, when I'm in the room, I want people to look at me. We says, when I'm in the room, I want people to look at Jesus. Band, you guys can head up on stage. I'm about to close. The power, the power in understanding that the person next to you is, is, what God, is, is who God called you to love. The person in front of you and the person behind you. If there's nobody behind you, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this is important. I'm not here to just retain everybody. I'm not fighting for the retention of compelled students. I'm empowering and I'm equipping you guys to go into the world and make a, and make a really a big difference. And to continue to seek the heart of God. Because the truth is, and the reason why I title this message the highest in the room, is because when you guys are in your rooms, obviously you guys are going to leave this room eventually, and you're going to go out in your world, you're going to get in your, your parents' car, your car, whatever happens, however you got here, you're going to go home, and hopefully this message isn't just something that went in through one ear and then out the other, hopefully it sticks with you, but it's empowering and equipping you to say, listen, whenever I'm in a room, I'm carrying the presence of God with me. Whenever I'm in a room, come on now, whenever I'm in a room, I'm carrying the presence of God with me. Will you guys stand up with me as I close out this message? Whenever I'm in this room, 
I'm carrying the presence of God. Whenever I have the presence of God in me, I know that the atmosphere can be, uh, begin to shift. I believe that the atmosphere can be, begin to shift around me because I have a, a presence of God that is changing that atmosphere. My faith says that I serve a God of miracles. I serve a God that can lead people out of their depression. I serve a God that can lead people, lead people out of their anxiety, out of their self-hatred, out of their addiction, out of their lust, and out of their darkness. That's the God that I serve. I know it and I believe it. And whenever I'm in a room, whenever we're in a room, our faith is the highest in the room. Do you believe that? Come on, can you lift your hands right now? Can I pray over you? Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, Drew, look, this was the message I needed to hear. It's time for me to get my life back on track with Jesus. It's time for me to fully surrender my heart. It's time for me to fully surrender all of my ways to the cause of what Jesus is doing. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to accept Jesus and fully surrender your heart to him tonight. Right now in this moment, this isn't a moment about anybody else other than you and God. Whether you came here with friends, whether you're tempted to open your eyes and look who's about to lift their hand and, and pray this prayer. But I just believe it in the power of moments. I believe in the power of moments and I believe that this is a moment right now that you cannot miss. So maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, tonight is my night. Tonight's the night that I'm making this decision to follow Jesus and never look back. If that's you, would you just, will you just lift your hand in here and say, that's me? And you're here tonight and you're saying, today is the day. Would you pray this prayer after me? Everybody can join in because we're all gonna be a family here in a moment. Say, dear Jesus, today's the day. I'm making this decision to follow you. Holy Spirit, come into my life and live your resurrected life in me and through me by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, can we put our hands together for anybody that just made that decision? If you made that decision to follow Jesus, I'd love to have a conversation with you in the lobby after service about what some next, step looks, uh, some next, next steps look like, excuse me. And I, I do, I believe it's the most important decision that you can make, but here's the thing. It's not a one-time decision. You know, I know I'm talking about the power in moments, but the truth is, is that more power is gonna happen when you go out into your world and when, when you go home tonight and when, and when you're in moments where your faith is gonna get tested because your faith will get tested. And the powerful moments aren't just in here, they happen out there. And I want you to, like I said, never look back. Make that decision, never look back. Wake up and make that decision every single day for the rest of your life. Choose Jesus, amen. We're gonna go back into a song here and we're gonna sing. And I think there's a lot of power in these lyrics. And so I wanna see everybody just worshiping wholeheartedly, just giving your heart, just giving your all to, these, to, these, to the lyrics in these songs because they're not just written down just for fun, for karaoke. They're written down because there's truth and there's power that lie within those lyrics. So as we go back in this song, would you lift your hands one more time? I wanna pray over you and then we're gonna sing it out. Father, I thank you so much for every hand represented in here tonight. I thank you for, for, for every life that's represented here tonight. God, and I'm believing that today is a different day. Today is a day of new beginnings. Today is a day where people are gonna to start to walk in, in the love and the grace and the truth. God, I pray against uh, what the enemy is gonna to try to do and steal the word away that was just uh, proclaimed over them right now. God, I just pray that they would walk out of here completely transformed, different, a new creation, walking in fear of who you are, God. So we, we love you, we worship you, and we give our all to you in Jesus' name. And everybody shout it.